Right, so I'm back with another episode of Tap 5 Mads. It's actually a Tap 6 this week. Why, you may ask? Because fuck it, that's why. But yeah, since it's been a while since I actually made one of these episodes, we've got a few good mods stacked up here. Including, for the first time ever, a mod that's been ported over to the PS4. So we're gonna get to those mods right about now. So yeah, during my adventures in the commonwealth, I pulled off a very sophisticated heist in order to retrieve the recipe to synthesize the chemicals required to make jet. But the interesting thing is that while I was pulling off that heist, I found a terminal with the password SETTLEMENT, which is unquestionable proof that Preston is in on a commonwealth drug trade. So I guess that's what Preston has been up to. But knowing that, I kinda feel like I need to pack some heat now, so what better than some good old, reliable revolvers. With the old fashioned Schofield revolver and a slightly more modern MP412 Rex. To get a chance of these bad boys, you simply go to the gun vending machine right next to the red rocket. I may think this looks an awful lot like a Nuka Cola vending machine. Well, that's what they call diversification. That's capitalism right there. In which you open up the vending machine and you take your two revolvers. So they both look pretty cool, although they do have hammers that cock back with the power of your mind. But to make up for it, they get some nice and fitting reload animations. The MP412 also has a nice and beefy sound effect. Neither one offers a lot in the realm of customization. You strap some sights and some scopes to them and you can change the barrel length depending on what makes you feel comfortable. And you can also rechamber the wrecks to fire whichever ammo you have a surplus of. Overall two pretty cool revolvers. But they need something a tiny bit more menacing than two six shooters. And what is more menacing than a good old pump action shotgun with the Remington 870 Magnum Police? You can find one in the root cellar in Sanctuary, simply do a backflip off the roof and go inside. Then just ignore the iBot that's in there with a top head and a monocle and pick it up. So this is a pretty damn cool shotgun with custom sounds that make it sound powerful. And it's also got custom pump animations. You're actually going to be racking back that slide and depending on how many shells you've shot, the reload animation will be different too. So say you've shot twice, when you reload you'll actually put two shells back in a tube. Aside from the nice and custom animation, the gun also looks pretty good. It's not amazingly customizable, you can strap some different receivers to it, go for a short or a long variant and you can change the iron sights. But that is about it. Overall it's a nice and custom weapon that finally brings over a good old pump action shotgun to the game. Anyway, speaking of custom animations, at number 5 we've also got Lever Action Rifle Reload Fix, since I always jam around about reload animations. Now in a vanilla game, the Lever Action Rifle Reload is not always that realistic, since no matter how many times you shot, the reload animation will be the same. You'll always put 5 rounds in that thing, which isn't really all that realistic when you've only shot at one round. So this mod fixes that right up. With this mod, you get a realistic Lever Action Rifle Reload. If you shot once, you're only going to be putting one round back in a tube. And if you shot out everything, you'll first chamber around and then you'll fill up the entire to. Overall a pretty simple mod, but it obeys the laws of physics, which I can appreciate. Anyway, shotguns and lever action rifles kind of leave a mess and just every week I get this gigantic laundry bill for cleaning out all the blood on my clothing. So I kind of want something long range, just in case I need to take out a certain someone. So we'll go with the Wastelanders XM2076 which is a highly customizable bolt action sniper rifle. To get your hands on this thing, you'll need to go long and far to the realms of Vault 111, where it's conveniently placed on top of a crate. So pick it up and you're ready to craft your own sniper rifle flavor. So this is a very cool sniper rifle, you can customize this thing to make it truly yours. You can decide what length of barrel fits you best, you can add a muscle or a suppressor, you can go for a large magazine, go with iron sights or use one of two see-through scopes. You can also strap a laser to this thing and you can decide what type of camo you want on the body as well as the scope. There's a default black finish, you've got desert camo, digital blue, digital grey, digital forest, digital red, just plain old forest, and snow, in case of another nuclear winter. And finally, there's the bad animator, which you'll have to find somewhere out in the wasteland. You can also alter the accuracy, range, damage, and recoil to make this thing as powerful and precise as you like. But that is not all, aside from being extremely customizable and looking really good, it also sounds great, and it has custom animations. It's got a custom draw animation, a custom reload animation, and it's got a right-handed bull cycling animation. This rifle is 100% custom, and cool. It is definitely one of the best weapon mods I've showcased so far. But after I may or may not take out that certain someone, I do need an escape plan. Now my orbital drop shack station sort of broke, and I don't really have the funds right now to send up a repair shuttle, so I need an alternative, and I found the shiny stealth suit. So to get your hands on this thing, you'll have to go to the pier somewhat north of the castle, just ignore the kid that's there pointing out towards the sea, and swim to the thing that sticks out of the water, then enter the submarine. And when you're in there, talk to the nice guy at the very back, and uh... Call me bastard. Die! Oh yeah, shit. Old habits. 
Anyways, after you spat the blood out of your mouth, just walk past the corpse and pick up your very own shiny stealth suit. Then just make sure you are Furio with an S8 and run. Once you resurface, you can try out your new skin tight suit. Now this is the shiny stealth suit like the one in Fallout 3 in New Vegas, so it is a sleek looking stealthy outfit and it's also pretty customizable. In an armor workbench you can add a stealth fuel which allows you to go invisible if you crouch. You can also add a jump augmentation if you like pretending to be a kangaroo. And you can add a speed augmentation to make you go faster or make enemies fly off if you're close to them. Which sometimes is a tiny bit underwhelming. At other times it has a tendency to launch radar kids into outer space. So you might be able to repair that orbital station after all. Anyways, that is not all. You can also change the material and the armor on this thing. You can go for the heavily worn material, which is heavily worn. It's a tiny bit banged up, the colors are faded, and it's just not as shiny. Hi Gooey, however, gives you a fresh cone of paint with some orange lining, an orange visor, and a red star on your back. And Yahua area. Yes, I am definitely pronouncing this correctly. But this one drops the orange visor and adds a lick of green paint. And finally, there's the armor. You can go with Battlemaster, which adds some extra head protection, as well as protective fabric to your torso, along with some very stylish patches. Overall, it's pretty cool looking, just don't wear it anywhere in the vicinity of Liberty Prime or things will end poorly. Lastly, there's the Wastelander armor, which gives you a nice leather coat and a cloak to put over your stealth armor to fit in just a tiny bit better with the Wasteland fashion style. For some reason though, there were some weird green smudges I couldn't get rid of, so I'm not sure what that's all about. But yeah, if you like sneaking around or you just want a really cool looking outfit, this suit has you covered. Well, we've now got some armor and uh, we've got plenty of guns, so it's about time for a house. The house I was residing in previously, while well, still in good shape, the body out on the porch uh, started to smell just a tiny bit, so I kinda had to move on. I also still have to lay low, and we can't really get much lower than below sea level. So I found the Fallout Shack apartment. Which adds in an apartment in the middle of the Atlantic, so we have to take a plane over there. As I said before, the funds have run just a tiny bit dry, so I have to make do with an economy flight. But after you make an emergency landing on the docks, casually walk up to the door that's sticking out of the water and open it. Then take a seat in the chair that's in front of you, which will take you down into the ocean. And this place kinda reminds me of this other universe where uh, there's a bunch of drug addicts in this dystopia. Anyways, would you kindly press the like button? Right, good. Now we can get back to business. So this is a very stylish apartment. It's got a living room with a TV, a bedroom with a fireplace, a little reading corner with a lantern, and a slightly derelict bathroom. It does have free toothpaste though. In case you want to do some tinkering, there's also a weapons workbench, and overall, it's a moderately sized, atmospheric, and secluded house. Just perfect for when you want to lay low in style. It also only uses in-game assets, so we finally got a PlayStation 4 port as well. But if you go outside again, you'll notice that a seagull has inexplicably trapped a perfectly fine M1 Garand on the pier. I guess Christmas arrived early this year. So this is a Garand that looks good, it's got custom sounds including the Garand ping, and it's also got custom reload animations where you actually take the black clip out and put a new one in there. This thing fires 308, does a decent amount of damage, and it's just very stylish. There's nothing quite like a Garand to go along with your Kami outfit. If you don't like the plane variant, you can also customize it a little bit. You can put a flash hider, a suppressor, or a bayonet onto your barrel. If you're not a fan of the iron sight, you can also attach a scope or an experimental aperture sight. And if you want to be more tactical, you can also attach black or blue duct tape to the stock. But that is not all. There's also two unique variants out there to be found in the wasteland. One of which has an obscene amount of blue duct tape. But when I was fiddling around with my Garant, I noticed that the seagulls had returned in numbers. Apparently they wanted their gun back. So I started unloading into them, I even threw down one of my S8s, which despite the gigantic explosion, didn't really seem to do all that much. So I kept firing many different Garands, but there was just no end to the seagulls, and I was forced to abandon ship. Anyways, that was it for the top 5, uh, 6, whatever. But this week, we've also got a fair few bonus mods, starting off with XXL nukes, nuclear explosions overall. So this mod increases the blast radius and the damage of your nukes. It also adds in lighting effects and a ton of extra radiation, and overall, it just makes your nukes feel and look more deadly. You definitely want to be wearing sunglasses when you use these nukes. But once you're done blowing yourself up, it's time to track down a new companion. Let's go back down into the root cellar and talk to the iBot with a top hat and a monocle. Now, he will yammer on about Russian literature, but if you wait long enough, he'll start following you around. He does have an attitude problem, however. If you're really that much of a glutton for punishment, why not stare at yourself in a mirror? He also didn't really seem to help me out all that much in combat, but he does look very stylish. So there's that. And the final model this week is Tina 
the Lucas Candyland CBBE Atomic Beauty Vanilla Female Outfits and Craftable Cam Harnesses. Body Slide. Which might be the longest mod title I've come across so far. This mod adds in a bunch of drug dealer clothes and harnesses, mostly for females. If you're a male, you cannot wear these slightly revealing outfits, unfortunately. You can, however, wear the drug harnesses, which allow you to have all your favorite drugs right on you. Some colorful hypodermic needles, pill bottles, and holstered mentats. You can now truly be the discreet drug dealer you've always aspired to be. Wait, Preston? Jet formula? Preston clones? Drug harnesses? The constant need for settlement expansion? Being upset with raider competition? I think I'm starting to piece things together here. It's all starting to make a lot more sense. I think Preston might be an entrepreneurial post-apocalyptic drug kingpin. I'm truly gonna get to the bottom of this. Someday. Just not today, because we've run out of screen time. So uh, yeah, until next time. So yeah, it's been quite a while since I did one of these top 5 mod episodes. I did the top 10 mods of 2016, which uh, wasn't really a top 10, and all the mods weren't really from 2016. There was a few 2015 mods in there too, but in that episode, I didn't do one of these rambly bits at the very end. It felt kind of, uh, lacking. It felt like something was missing. So here I am. So yeah, now I gotta find something to say here. So, uh, yeah, I went to Portugal. Lisbon, to be exact. So uh, that was pretty interesting. You know, it was sort of like a beautiful old-fashioned city. A pain he has to navigate though, because all the streets are like crooked, they keep swiveling up and down. A lot of verticality there too. The sidewalks are of inconsistent size too. It was hard to navigate at times, you know. I think I sort of prefer the American grid system in some ways there, you know. You just keep walking in a straight line for miles, and someday you'll reach your destination. In Portugal, however, man, there's so many freaking streets. Jesus. But yeah, other than that, uh, don't really have a lot to talk about here, so still working on a robot for uni, so we're gonna be wrapping that thing up soon-ish, before the end of uh, January, so I'll probably make a video on that too, separately. I got some footage and some photos of the progression, so uh, I can probably ramble on about that for a little bit. Other than that, for like the first half of this year, I'm probably gonna be pretty freaking busy. Gotta wrap up that robot, I'm helping organize this sports event, which I'll probably ramble on about more at some other point in time. And uh, I gotta wrap up the bachelor's degree too. And then at the same time, I'm probably still gonna be trying to pump out these high quality, amazing YouTube videos. Top quality. But yeah, that's all I have to ramble on about here, so uh, that's my life right there. Truly exciting. But anyways, until next time.